Thanks for staying with us. So you, many of you know that on Wednesdays we like to celebrate women that we love. So our guest today is a certified environmental consultant and she has garnered experience in various fields of chemical engineering and management. Today she's the MD CEO of BAMSAT Nigeria Limited as well as the managing partner of BAMSAT Engineering Services Limited. Both companies are involved in environmental consultancy, fire safety and civil mechan mechanical engineering services respectively. Welcome with us, engineer Margaret Aino Oguntala. Welcome to the show, Thank also you. known as the Erelu of NSC. What's the NSC? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Yeah. Oh, Nigeria Society of Engineers. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Good to have you on the show. It's actually very nice to be here. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said earlier, to see you girls live, <laughs> you know, Thank outside, you. I mean, outside the outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we hear you're a grandmother. I am. Oh, yeah. A and proud two. one, Oh, too. fantastic. <laughs> right, so before you came in, we were talking about disciplining children. I'd like to hear your thoughts on before we go into your career and what you've done, like, would you allow somebody else um, discipline your child? And how far would you let that person go in correcting your child? Ah, oh, well, I, I, actually, the job of um, bringing up children in the past used to be the job of everybody around. Yeah. And that's why at, at the time we had children living with their parents and, the, and, and um, family. Uh, family, you know, extended family at that. But these days, it's, it's a bit different. But for me, I, I still believe that discipline of children, I mean, disciplining children is where we start from. You have to start to tell the child what to do from the cradle. And I wouldn't mind my friend disciplining my child. I, it's, I think whatever you can do for your child, mm -hmm. you, should, you should be able to do with mine. Right. I would trust my friend normally. I know, I know, I know the kind of people that, I, that are my friends, right. so they are normally people that I trust. And I expect them to also trust me with their children. Mm -hmm. If you can't trust me with your child, then there's no point mm -hmm. having your child run with mine. Okay, so, interesting. Yes. Now, going to a career as an engineer, I mean, and I know that being in this um, Nigerian Society of Engineers is not an easy thing, especially as a woman. You know, um, I'd like you to give us in a, a, a small recap of your career, um, the ups and downs, the highlights, those things that you had to succumb to get to where you are today. Um, thank you. Um, well... Um, engineering is a, is a career that I went into because of the fact that uh, I felt more comfortable with calculations. Okay. You know, my father wanted me to be, become a medical doctor, but <laughs> I just couldn't stand biology and all right. those. Um, so, so yes, and all that. So and the chloroform and okay. all that. So, so but I, but with engineering, I was I mean with mathematics, additional mathematics, I was more comfortable, and uh, and so that's how I came into engineering, and and I chose. Chemical engineering. I was actually admitted for civil engineering, but I also didn't like drawing. Mm. So, <laughs> so I chose chemical engineering. And that's why I'm a chemical engineer. And I practiced for 35 years now. Wow. So um, I graduated in 1986. I went to the University of oh. Benin. So, um, and I've had a life of movement. So I also understand that as an engineer, I see things, you know, I also I saw things growing up mm. that intrigued me, that made me want to also uh, participate and um, and how they would contribute to yeah. those things. When I, I remember the first time I saw a bridge, I was, I was so amazed. <laughs> I was like, ah, no. So who are the people that build bridges? And yes. I was told civil engineers, ah, I want to be a civil engineer. You mm. know, that kind of thing. But, but then I couldn't go with drawing. So, and then again, um, I had a, a cousin who worked with the oil and gas. Mm. So, and I liked the, what he was doing, you know, going to the rig and stuff. So, I, I chose, that's why I now said, okay, since I couldn't, I didn't like drawing, mm. I should do, go for it. Well, the always been smooth. Did they just allow you to come <laughs> in as a woman? Yeah, was it very it, smooth? Yes, it wasn't difficult at all. Oh, wow. It, it wasn't difficult at all. It's, I, I mean, I got admitted and I was treated the same way as the boys. Oh, wow. But the boys were actually kind of compassionate with us. Were, you know, they will, when we had practicals, like in welding and stuff, they would normally say, okay, Meg, you know, let me do this for you, you know. <laughs> so instead of, kind of rebuffing us, they, they, they oh. pampered us. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, so. in university, I used to think that engineering students were the coolest. The guys were cool, but mm. the girls especially were so cool. I'm like, look at them just doing, you know, real stuff, <laughs> yes. you know? <laughs> but I also know that at the time, well, even you know, your time much earlier than mine, they, we didn't have so many female engineering students. Yes. So I'm wondering, at, during your time, is it a situation of we used to have a lot more then, but over a period it reduced or that you're seeing more women going into engineering? And how would you say that you being an engineer has helped other women to pursue engineering? engineering. Okay, thank you. Well, in my days, 
um, there weren't so many girls. In my class of 44, and we had the highest in my year, mm -hmm. in my set, we were 10. And that was a lot. In the whole of the faculty at the time, we were like 12 wow. or 13. And, and so that was, that was very little. But last year, I was on an accreditation uh, visit to a university as a mem member of the Council of the uh, Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. And I saw girls. I, I was impressed. More girls. Wow. In fact, there was a particular class that had more girls than boys. Oh, wow. And the girls are doing so well. Uh, so um, I, I think my going into engineering has helped other girls to study engineering yeah. because I've been able over time, but through the grace of God, to act as a role model for many of them. Mm. Yeah. And I also do try to mentor them. I try to Fantastic. talk to them, tell them that engineering is for girls too. And then when they see you, like today now, I'm sure a lot of young girls will say, okay, I want to become an engineer, yeah. you know, that kind of yeah, thing. So, okay. so you, um, when you were explaining your journey, how you started, you mentioned mm. how you were exposed to different industries and how you saw the possibilities and you, you were interested in pursuing um, different career paths before you settled on what you had the skill to. Mm -hmm. The conversation, you just had it like it was a casual thing. Many people don't have that same thoughts when they are considering what to do in school. It's not based on I met this engineer. How would you think um, your exposure to engineers early in life influenced you following that path? And how can we increase more exposure like that to encourage young people to go into STEM? OK, um, yes, thank you. I, I like the STEM <laughs> that you have brought into it. Well. Um, like I said earlier, seeing engineers helped me, helped my decision. And having one or two in, in the family, mm. particularly those who were, and, and many of them were doing well. Mm. I mean, these days they say engineers are not doing well, but really, the engineer is trained by training, is trained to do well, because he can do a lot of things. So, um, what we need to do now, and we have been doing a lot of that, especially the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, we take the campaign to, from primary school, mm. encouraging them, telling them that um, engineering is a thing of the mind. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a career that has to do with the brain. You know, it's your intellect. It's not physical. It's not as physical as some may want to, to, to look at it. It's, it's just what you can do with your brain, you know, and all of that. So we go to primary schools, secondary schools, right. do career talk. Right, try to right. encourage them and bring more girls into, into it. STEM. Fantastic. Go ahead, yes. Nima. Okay, so um, there's a comment for you on YouTube. Dania Ayo says, I remember her. Her daughter and I were mates in QC. Mm. <laughs> Lala Butola, well done, ma. And she says that you were in the forefront of their PTA. So that brings me to, you know, the, the job that you as a member of the NSE yes. or the NSE as a group can do. For instance, we had the co collapse. Is it possible that, you know, as a group, the a group of engineers could have done something to avert? If, or is there a punishment that you can give to your members who were involved in the decision making of how the structure was drawn, how it was executed? Is there, is there that role that you right. can play in limiting things like that from happening? Yes, of course. We have, apart from the Nigerian Society of Engineers, which is just an association of all, the body of all the engineers in Nigeria, we do have a regulatory body, which is um, the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, CORIN. And uh, incidentally, I'm a member of the council representing the Southwest Geopolitical Zone. The Nigerian Society of Engineers has a um, means of disciplining members who are in areas like this, mm -hmm. particularly for this, this enormous or great calamity. Mm -hmm. But even from the littlest, the smallest thing, once you, we have our ethics and codes of practice. And once you err in any way, we, there are ways of punishing people. People, some, some members, members stand to be uh, suspended from the Nigerian set of engineers. And then current has, by, the, by its powers, has the power to actually prosecute mm. members who err. Uh, recently, we have, recent, we have a, a tribunal you know, in current. And recently, two engineers were tried you know, for, um, uh, for mis professional misconduct. And just the licenses were suspended, wow. each one, for six months. So what, what we do with this kind of thing, we have engineering regula uh, regulation and monitoring of projects. We have people who go to projects to monitor. Right. And if it is discovered that our members are involved in any of such deals or any of such practices or failed projects, we have a way of dealing with them. Right. We set up investigation, and if the a panel, and if we find, them, find it necessary, we take them to the tribunal. 
All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you okay? Woman? Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So it's still Wednesday and we're discussing with the women we love. So we still have engineer uh, Margaret Oguntala with us. So let me ask you about marriage and career because um, this always kind of, it's like a spanner that just throws in the wheel. You know, a <laughs> yes. young girl is an engineer mm -hmm. doing the, all this great stuff, you know, trying to be this person and suddenly marriage shows up and you're like, ah, okay, I have to slow down. Children are coming. This is happening. <laughs> How did that happen in your own regard? How, how did you marry marriage into your career and what you're doing. <laughs> I, I like the, the way you put that, marry marriage <laughs> into my career. Well, um, fortunate, I'll start by saying that I, I, I've been fortunate. I met my husband before I left school. I was doing my industrial attachment and worry at the time. So he's an engineer, he's a chemical engineer as well. So um, there's, this, there's been this understanding from the beginning. Okay. He knew that he was marrying an engineer, which is different from, and he, know, he knows what it takes to be an engineer. Right. So he knew what he was going into. Right. So that made it kind of, I had a soft landing. But then, um, as a woman, you know, and, and an African woman, there are a few things that you must learn to do. I mean, to, in marriage, you must learn to take care of the home first. And so growing, growing up, you know, I... I was able to, in the beginning, it was not too difficult. But at, at some point, I almost kind of left my career by one side and concentrated more on the home. Family. And Family. It was like taking some time off yes. Yes. until my children were a bit older. And that's why I was able to participate in PTA, mm. you know, all the PTA. In one of them, I was chairman. Mm. So, and then I later found that I could, there were things that I could do within my career, within my profession, that would not take so much of my time. So I, that, that's why I also didn't work for government or any enterprise for too long. So I started my own small company. I started by selling industrial chemicals, which is all part of chemical engineering anyway. So I started by selling industrial chemicals, then looking for, I mean, doing uh, feasibility studies, you know, and then environmental consultancy. And then all those things I could still do. Mm. Within, my time was flexible. So I've been lucky. Hmm. But, but how did you switch? Because when, when, when some of us enter that space of, okay, let me just put career aside, let me focus on my children, yes. it, we find it difficult to go back because we feel like we've lost touch with the system. How did you go back? That's because I didn't really leave yeah. completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I started my own company, yeah. Ramstar Nigeria Limited. So I started doing, I, I was still doing things that were relevant to chemical engineering. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I didn't leave entirely. Right. But so, if, if you do have to leave, it's, it's um, at, at some point, you, you ease yourself back into, into the profession. Okay. I so think that's, really, the, that's the way. Um, like you said, you were, you were a bit on the lucky side, and I'm, we're happy for you. I want to ask you about the role of society, um, the NSC. Yes. Because in Nigeria, there are many society for this one, society for that one, community of this one, associations that seem to just be a forum for making money for members of the ESCOs in the association mm -hmm. and not really adding value to that industry. How would you say that NSC has benefited you professionally? And what would be the advantage for women watching that probably want to be more influential in engineering? Would they get any benefit from being a member of NSC? Well, the Nigerian Society of Engineers has, uh, as one of its objectives, the welfare of its members. Mm. So it's, um, for me, in fact, I would say that I'm a better person for being a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. I've had a lot of opportunities. I've been exposed to various opportunities just by being a member of the NSC. But then it's not just enough. It's not enough to, be, to just mm -hmm. be a member. You must participate. You must mm -hmm. be ready to volunteer your time. And I've done a lot, of, a lot of that over the years. But I've also had a lot of goodwill come my way by because virtue of being yeah. a member of NSC. So, uh, I mean, in, by, in serving, by serving the NSC, you get to meet people. You get to mm -hmm. network with people. And then you get things. Things will come your way. Right. And you don't necessarily have to look for the money. The mm. money will come, mm. you know, through networking and goodwill. The right. money will eventually come. Right. And as for the earth goes, making money, really, I, I don't think it is that easy. People have that perception. Even mm. now, when you're going for elective position in NSC, some people, some people have asked me before. Somebody has told me before that I should pay for his accommodation. And I asked him, why? Is there consistency allowance in NSC? <laughs> <laughs> but he told the Nigerian me, factor. Yes, yeah. now he told me that, no, you're going to be closer to Asso Rock. You're going to, I said, uh -huh. why? 
I was chairman of Ikeda branch for two years. I had, in fact, three years. I had access to Alausa and the governor, but I never got any, any, I never made any, any, yeah. any money yeah, from that. But okay. I also was exposed to, yeah. you know, opportunities. Yeah. Talking about elections and being a woman, I see that you have been a three-term vice president of the um, Nigerian Society for Engineers. And I'm wondering sometimes when it comes to women, do they just give us that vice president, assistant, deputy, deputy governor, treasurer. secretary, treasurer. What's happening? Why can't we be president? You know, what's happening? Is that the case with you? Is it a gender thing or is it that we're not putting in as much work as our male counterparts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, they, they don't really give us any particular role. What we do is well, we, we participate as much as the men and earn the rules. Uh, I started from the Ikeja branch of Nigerian Society of Engineers, and I grew through the ranks, from treasurer to ex officio then eventually to chairman. And I, I, I made a very good impact to the glory of God. And by the time I was ready to go to the national, it was easier for me. Mm. So, but then, because we are women, and we, are, we, are, we, are, we, we have a less number than the men, mm -hmm. it's not as easy for us as the men. But then, those for women who have made their marks, it's not too difficult. However, um, we, up till now, like you said, I mean, and I don't think it's a gender thing. I think it's just something that we women need to work more. It's just about, for. Is it about confidence. They no, have no, women it, having confidence in us to run. To, to run for. I, I don't think so. We've had women run for the highest office before. Mm. The first, I, I mean, as early as 2001, we had a woman who contested for the post of deputy president. And the deputy president automatically becomes president after two years. So mm. we've had women run before. I contested in 2017 for mm. that post position. Yeah. But the, the, the thing is that, you see, because, like, like I said, we don't have as many women mm. as we have numbers. men. The, the number. number. And yeah. politics, they say, is a, it's a it's game a of numbers. Number, yeah. So I think that is the basic yeah. thing. But as for... The confidence the female engineers have okay. all that it requires. You know when you mentioned the word, this is a different gist, I'm sorry, I have to add this, because I, I forgot to gist you ladies about it, this mm -hmm. gender thing. I went, and I'm going to mention the place I went to, mm. the Yoruba Tennis Club. <laughs> I was there on Friday or something. It was someone who was speaking, I think the honorable minister, someone was speaking there. Anyway, so when it was time for Q&A, the, the MC, he said, okay, let's take questions. I'm going to take three questions from here and three questions from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are number one, two, three, for, and me, I raised my finger. You now say, hey, and the gender over there will pick that one, the gender. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> so the gender. Now you're in a box. I'm saying. And I kept saying, okay, after the first, second, and third of the two, the fifth person thing, hey, so where's the gender that wanted? Can wow. you and I kept, and I, I, I really I stood up and I'm thinking, gender. I kept saying, ah, it may not be gender. <laughs> and I stood up and I walked there. Say, hey, hey, so the gender is coming at the gender. I'm thinking, hey, you know, I just said, you know what? No, 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 thank you. Yeah. I just went right back to say, and I, 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 you can't just call me gender. I mean, I mentioned yes. I'm calling them, but I'm not calling them a boy. Mm -hmm. my, my father was a member of your Tennis Club, so I, I shouldn't be calling them a boy. I was just really shocked to be categorized as gender. Is Sometimes that person, calling out I, I, just I, I, correction? Is not I think they were the trying person. to say they were trying to say that okay, let the, the gender the opportunity, opportunity, let's, opportunity, let's yes. one female, let's have one female. Let's have one female. Just one female. You not just call me gender. Like anyway. that's one over six anyway. Yes, as one over six. That's not equality. Is not equal. No. Anyway, let me come to Nima. Uh, we have another to comment. Your you know, people, engineers are here. I've seen a good joke of what I know. She's an engineer. She's a fan of the show. Okay. Um, Don Antonio says, if our engineers are doing well, why then are our governments always looking for that for expatriates mm. here and there? Good good Although Joker answered him as an engineer, Please, well, yeah. yes. <laughs> well I, I, actually, the engineers are doing well. We we know that we engineers compare. I mean, compete very favorably with their counterparts all over the world. Uh, there are a lot of feats, you know, that are being done by engineers all over, from within here and outside. And the reason why government does not patronize us has nothing to do with whether we are good enough or not. We are competent, but. That it's, I think it's a political thing. I would say it's more political mm -hmm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's the, because of the fact that, you know, in the past, and then the mindset of people, mm -hmm. you know how people will feel this, is, this, this, this mug, you know, if it's imported, it's better. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, the people. Exactly. So it's the Foreign mindset mentality. of the people, too. 
You know, you would rather buy an imported thing than, like she than she a local. Like, like, so, 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 so it's the same thing. I don't completely agree with you. That's the that's 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 mentality. That's that's mentality. It's the mentality that, that maybe it's not, not mental. It's beyond mentality. Anyway, it's, 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 it's what the reality. finish. Engineer or good Let me ask you this question. Yes, it's not. Let me ask you this question. Yes. Ted Milan Bridge. Somebody did a video that the bridge was opening up. It was overlapping. And we saw the video with our own eyes. Just wise. for them to come and be re re respond from the Ministry of Works. Like, no, it's safe. Keep driving. You're okay. And we're like, well, ah, sorry. Explain to us why it is okay. I mean, mm -hmm. give us something more detailed than it's okay. It's Have safe to drive. Video, give us something safe. This is what happens as an engineer. So as an engineer, tell me, is Third Milan Bridge safe? Do you know about the overlapping? <laughs> and do you think it's safe for us to drive on? Mm, there, there are points that are joint there yes, now. Yes. So what the video, you know what this social media does now? Somebody will just go there and put the video very close to the yes, overlapping yes. or the or the joint yes. and tell you that ah it's not safe it's opening but the, we have Should we have joints wait yeah go ahead no Should that's another joint? yeah they, it's it overlaps yeah yeah so the, the thing is that if the if the ministry of works says it is safe the, the ministry of works has engineers there we have structural engineers with who work with the ministry of and we, we trust them the ministry of works is head is headed by a very sound engineer uh, engineer, the, the SA works, the engineer Aram Idi is yeah. very sound, experienced and everything. And if she comes and tells you that it is safe, then you should believe her. Okay. You don't yeah. need to... No any so let me, let me take to you back that. to the safe. question that mm -hmm. came from social media. And why some of... And, and I've posed this question on the show as well, that we have so many local problems that we are seeking international solutions so, yeah. to those problems. And we have loads of engineers. We still have power issues not resolved. We have loads of civil engineers and we don't have good roads in the country. <laughs> is it that it is impossible for us to do good roads that will last 10 years, 15 years? Because it's seeming that they do road now, in the next few months, is bad. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the side that they have done, is already going bad. Yeah. So what do you think is the gap? What is the issue that we are not... Is it that we're not using our hands? Or we are, we are, what is we that have is the good problem? Materials. Mm. Hmm. Again, I'll tell you that it's more political. Mm. This is the reason. The reason is this. And then, of course, I was, there's also an issue. You see, the Julius Berger of this world, they all started small too. Mm. But they had the support of their government. The CCCC -C or one of those, CCCC, they had the support of their government. The Nigerian engineer needs the support of its government. We have engineers coming together. Engineers in Nigeria can also come together and be, become as big, mm. collaborate and become as big as Julius Berger. But do we have the enabling environment? Do we have the encouragement? Do we mm. have, you know, in China they have the, um, the um, industry, you can, you, can, you can take a loan, right. you know, from the industry, construction loan, sort mm. of. And then you pay back, you know, at, your, at a very good right. interest and all of that, so you can do jobs. Here, you, you, get, you get a job, and then you get, you, get, you, get, you get paid halfway or whatever. The budget, they tell you that the money, the, the, money, the budgetary uh, allocation for that job, it's not even enough to do the job. job wow. Too. So, so what happens? Yeah. So, so the, that's why we have, a lot of, we have yeah. a lot of investments. We have a lot of projects that are, that are unfinished. Mm. Mm. We have right. a lot of ele white elephant projects, as we put them, yeah. because they don't make Let enough take a budget for the for up so Raymond Olaolua says, hello, ma, what is NSE plan on monitoring of engineering company procedures in recruiting and training graduate engineers because mm. most indigenous engineering companies only recruit fresh graduates and assign projects to them without training them on their code of conduct. Wow. Well, the Nigerian Society of Engineers does a lot in that regard. The, what that person needs to do is to, because a lot of people, we, we can't, you won't know people unless they belong to your group. Mm -hmm. So I think, for instance, in the Nigerian Society of, Society of Engineers, the Kedja branch, where I belong, we have programs for young engineers to enter, you know, for to for well, well, do you, do you, to do you develop control, them. Do you regulate company members, companies, um, uh, members, members yes. yes, that, you know, that on their methods of recruiting and their training for, for fresh Methods graduates. of recruiting and training is, is it's internal. It, it's internal. Those, those are internal, really. We, what, the only thing we can do is to help our members develop. And by organizing courses yeah. and uh, making them employable mm -hmm. and helping them develop where, even where they are employed. Mm -hmm. But within the, the companies, NSC, Let me quickly NSC throw in this last question. Still within the engineering space, we know that many of our um, con con companies in Nigeria that are foreign-owned must have local 
partnership. Yes. And there are lots of complaints that a lot of companies that get contracts within Nigeria employ um, their staff, their key staff come from their own country. What is NSE doing to improve more local engineers being employed by foreign companies Come within in. Nigeria? Uh, actually, the, you, you know about the executive order five, which mm. actually also empowers the Nigerian engineer, mm. about the, especially dealing Local with content. the Nigerian content. Mm. There is a certain percentage of um, Nigerians that must be in the employ of every mm. foreign company. Mm -hmm. And then even the level. And Korean is doing a lot in that regard mm. to ensure that we don't just, they don't just take engineers at the lower level mm. and then put their own people as, at the top. because whoever is at the top is the one who really determines the, the success yeah. and the, yeah. uh, of, of the project. We have to wrap up. Any final words? Because, you know, one of the reasons why we brought you here is because we admire your career, what you're doing. We're happy that a woman in jail you know, is, is up there and yes. lots of young people are trying to aspire to be like you. So final words for young people watching you today. Well, I, I would say that um, wherever you find yourself, try to excel, you know, in whatever you do. Because it is what you do that will determine what responsibilities will be given to you. And it's only when you have the opportunity for bigger opportunities that you can showcase yourself. Right. And that means you must continually develop yourself, skill up, up, remain, continue to reskill, you know, mm. continue to develop yourself and to the point where you can occupy any space, particularly yeah. the leadership space, That's because it. it's not meant for any particular person. We mm. all should aspire. And from the day you start, you should aspire for that highest position. Fantastic. Mm. We wish you all the best Thank in you. all your endeavors. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you, Marayo. That's all we can take on we've been speaking with engineer Margaret Aino Guntala, who is probably known as Irelu of NSC. Irelu <laughs> Have a lovely day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>